Hello everyone. So for this video, we'll learn about how we can evaluate the economic merits of a project. How do we know if a project or an investment is acceptable or not? So let me walk you through the principles of project evaluation. At the end of this lecture, we are expected that we're able to explain the concepts of profitability, liquidity, rate of return, and the MARR. Secondly, we should be able to evaluate the payback period of a project or an investment. Right, so let's begin. How do you know if a project is desirable? If a person asks you or pushes you if you wish to invest um, on his offer, what would you first ask? You'll probably ask about its profitability. You'll probably ask, how much would I earn from that investment? How much would I, um, would I get from, from that? Will I be earning enough? Would it be worth um, spending my money on? So that's profitability. However, that's not the sole consideration that we may have, correct? So assuming that you get an answer, okay, if you invest now, you'll get 1,000% uh, return on investment. But ask when you get it, ask when you get the earnings, um, you're, you get an answer now, okay, you'll get it after 100 years. No? So yes, it's profitable, but it's not desirable anyway. Now that speaks of the concept of liquidity. So liquidity answers, how fast will I be able to recover my investment? So um, project or an investment may be earning a lot, but if it doesn't earn, over a preferable period of time, then it's called an illiquid investment or an illiquid project. Right? And we don't want that as well. Huh? Sabi nila, yung, ano da, yung investing on land is quite illiquid or not liquid because you cannot um, sell land outright. No? So there are more liquid investments like stock, which you can pull out anytime. But say you invest in... Um, a time deposit, or you use your money to, to purchase a lot, yeah? no? it'll take time to be able, for you to be able to sell it. And therefore, uh, it's not as liquid as you want it to be. Now, we talked about rate of return. When we say rate of return, it's the profit on an investment or a project. It's also known as ROI or return on investment. No, so it's it's basically a measure of the profitability of an endeavor or project. And when we say rate of return, it's basically the return expressed as a percentage of the original investment over a period of time, which is typically a year. No? But we all know that um, money has its time value, so it's not as simple as it's not as simple as just calculating the percentage of what you'll earn divided by the initial investment. No? So it's usual, it usually goes beyond that, which we'll learn in our subsequent lessons. Now, we talked about MARR earlier. So MARR stands for the minimum attractive rate of return. So it's the lowest rate of return for an investment to be acceptable. No? So, from the perspective of an investor or a potential investor, how much should the earnings be so that um, he would be agreeable, he or she should, would be agreeable to invest on it? No? So, ano ba? would I be willing to invest my money, this huge amount of money, for an investment that earns 1%? No? Or... Ah, hindi okay sa akin yan. I'll probably invest um, it someplace else kasi uh, mas mataas yung earning dito sa, sa um, option na ito. No? So I'll probably get 10% every year if I invest on this other um, option. Uh, so your MARR uh, is actually um, your threshold. No? How much should the return be for you to um, be attracted for you to be convinced to invest on a particular investment or a project. So you typically consider two things. No? 
uh, with uh, BMARR. So number one, the risk associated with the project. If a project um, is uh, fairly safe and stable or the investment is fairly safe and stable, you'd probably be content with lower um, rate of return, diba? That's why uh, a lot of people keep their money, uh, keep their money in banks. Correct? It's a uh, fairly stable. Pero bibigyan ka ng 0.25% lang uh, every year. No? So sometimes even lower than that. However, um, other considerations. Now, what be other opportunities for an investment? Uh, this is, um, to, to put it simply, kapag binigyan ka ng two options, let's say, okay, uh, you can invest your money in in an opportunity that earns some um, 8% per year. Tapos you have another option um, na 6% per year lang kitain and more or less the same yung risk profile nila. Which one would you go for? Iba dun ka pupunta sa higher um, or dun sa opportunity with a higher rate of return. Correct? No, so you usually consider the minimum attractive return as a function of these two. No? So again, the risk associated with the project, generally the riskier the investment is, the higher your, prefer, your preferable rate of return or the higher the attractive rate of return um, should be. No? Let me give another example. Yung mga tao tumataya sa loto, di ba? Yung mga tao tumataya sa loto, uh, because sobrang taas ng rate of return. Diba? It's um, bro, hundreds of million pesos. Diba? Pero um, you know that the risk is um, very high. Now, the, the chances of you winning in, in, ano, in a lottery is actually um, a lot less than the chance of a person getting hit by lightning. Diba? So the risk is quite high. The risk of you losing money. Pero people still um, people still um, participate in, in lotteries. It's because mataas yung rate of return. So it, it um, hits their minimum acceptable or minimum attractive rate of return. So regardless kung malaki yung chance of them losing it, okay lang. No? So isang uh, flip side of the explanation of MARR. This is also known as the hurdle rate. So in terms of project evaluation, ito yung minimum na gusto natin. O ito yung minimum dapat the rate of return such that papayag tayo na ituloy yung project. If the project yields less than that, then it might be pursue, uh, it, it, it might be better to uh, shelf the project no? or go for other options. So in terms of its composition, your minimum attractive rate of return is una, um, part of it is the real return. So how much uh, would you earn no? from, from that? Pero below that, no, alam natin na there is inflation rate. Kaya naman, actually, kapag nilagay mo yung pera mo sa, sa banko, no, uh, if you put your money in a bank, it earns some um, 0.25% annually no, na interest. Pero yung inflation rate actually is 6%. No? So you're at your... So, tumatas yung amount ng pera mo, face value, but the purchasing power decreases. So, parang actually negative pa yung nakuha mo. Um, or negative pa yung gains mo. Diba? Mas konti na yung kayang bilhin even if you have more money at the end of the year. No? So, when calculating the minimum attractive rate of return, Actually, dapat factor din yung inflation rate and yung preferred mo na return should be on top of that. And in addition to that, we, te we tend to add risk premium. No? So the riskier the investment is, the higher the threshold that dinadagdag natin para maging acceptable yung pag-invest natin dun sa option na yun. Diba? Katulad nga ng example natin kayo with uh, lottery. No? We to participate in lottery. If, if the price 
for 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 lotto is just a hundred pesos. Tapos the chance of you losing um, the amount, no, say twenty pesos, is a close to hundred percent. You probably wouldn't um um play lottery anymore, no. Pero kaya mo siya, kaya maraming tao yung nakapok up sa kanya. Kasi nga, malaki, malaki yung total rate of return. It, it hurdles um, their MERR, including the risk premium. In general, the greater the risk, the greater the MERR. Now, balik tayo sa question, how do we evaluate projects? There are three types of project evaluation methods. No? So the first one is using equivalent worth methods. The second is rate of return or ROR methods. These two will tackle in the subsequent na, uh, video natin. And these two pertains or these two are methods that are used to evaluate the profitability of a project or an investment. No? The third one, the payback period method is... Um, method that is used uh, to evaluate the liquidity of a project. So it answers how soon are we able to get the returns or how soon are we able to recover our investment. No? So for this video, unahin natin i-tackle um, itong payback period method. Right. I hope everything's clear so far. Now, payback period method um, to define just a few terms, uh, so payback period is the number of years required to recover an initial investment. It's a measure, as I mentioned in the previous slide, that it measures liquidity. Now, if I were to ask you, which one is more desirable? You want high or a low payback period? Okay, I hope we're all on the same page. We um, want a low payback period. We want the money to come in as soon as possible. Okay? How do we um, use payback period to evaluate projects? So, ganito lang yan, no? So, lower payback period, the more preferable. The, a project is deemed acceptable if the payback period is less than or equal to that which is acceptable to the person or the firm or the company. The caveat with using payback period as the sole um, evaluation method for a free project is that it does not consider the cash flow after the payback period. No? So ang gusto lang nating malaman talaga with the payback period method is how soon are, am I able to recover what I initially invested. It doesn't um, think about how profitable it is. So kunyari, um, kunyari, um, na recover mo yung investment mo after five years, pero after five years then sparse na yung um, earnings, no? so wala ka na masyadong matatanggap. In payback period method, okay na yun, okay na, nasagot na niya kailan, no? babalik. Um, on the flip side, actually, pwede din na mahaba yung payback period, pero pataas ng pataas yung earnings through time. No? So, with payback period method, we fail to, uh, or we do not typically take into consideration all the cash flows that happen after the payback period. With the long method, see this a payback period. So the first one is a simple payback period, wherein we calculate the payback period based on only the face value of the cash flows. Sabihin, may natanggap ka na 1,000 pesos at year 2, we take that as 1,000 pesos. May natanggap ka at year 4 na 2,000 pesos, we take that as 2,000 pesos. On the contrary, no, we have the discounted payback period. Ang ginagawa ng discounted payback period is we take into consideration the interest that your money would have earned. No? And as we know uh, from our previous lessons, that... Um, Money now is better than money later. So if you earn a thousand later, no, um, we try to get um, how much that would be worth in terms of your investment now. All right. So we use interest calculations. We use um, the time value of money principle as um, uh, an adjustment factor when calculating for the payback period. All right. As a simple um, illustration, let's start with the payback period. 
no so uh, when the cash flow cash inflows are uniform so basically madali lang natin mako compute yung payback we are using the simple payback period method no? so we just need to divide the total investment by the annual cash inflow and that gives us the um payback period which is denoted by t sub p now when cash inflows are not uniform ang ginagawa natin is we um calculate kung kailan natin ma-zero or inisa-isa natin no? so every year titingnan natin uh, at yun let's say I spent 5,000 pesos the next year nakakuha ko ng 1,000 so I have 4,000 left to recover the year after that we get 3,000 pesos so you have 1,000 left to recover no? um, and then the year after that and so on, di ba? Hanggang maubos mo siya. But we also count the fraction of years um, kung saan ng mga matatanggap natin na cash inflows. No? So that's why it's uh, TP minus 1 plus the amount that uh, you um, need to still recover divided by the total cash inflow during the year that you recover it. Alright? Mas madali kung i-illustrate natin yan through an example. So for instance, we want a, we want to purchase a 50,000 pesos equipment upgrade no? or we want to finance a 50,000 pesos equipment upgrade so that we can um, enhance your efficiency no adding um, 3D printing. So we expect that or we anticipate that um, the company's annual profit will increase by 30,000 pesos if we pursue this project. So every year, we expect that we have 30,000 pesos of cash in because that's the increase in the profit, which you wouldn't have if we do not invest on the 50,000 pesos. Determine the investment's payback period. So let's start by drawing the cash flow diagram. So we have a cash outflow at year zero, which is which amounts to 50,000 pesos. And then over the next five years, we expect to have a constant uniform cash flow of 30,000 pesos annually. So this is the simple version. We just need to divide um, the total investment by the of annual cash flow. So dividing 50 by 30,000, we have 1.67 years. All right. Now, paano naman kung nag-iiba-iba yung cash flow natin, yung cash inflow natin every year? So for instance, for our technolo technology innovation startup company, we would um, need to um, shell out an initial investment of um, 400,000 pesos. Pero the income that we project over the next five years are as follows. No? So first year, 100,000. Next year, 200. After the 300. So pataas. Dahil nakaka-capture tayo ng broader market. How do we deal with this? So what we can do is to compute uh, for the cumulative cash inflow. So by calculating the cumulative cash inflow, actually, ang ginagawa natin is kinocompute kino natin how much would we have recovered by that year, diba? So for instance, um, dito sa case na to, by year one, ang na-recover na natin sa 100,000. By year two, nakapag-recover na tayo ng 300,000. Pero dahil... Um, we have 400,000 that we need to recover. So the recovery would happen somewhere between years two and three, correct? No, kasi at year three, we would have already gained a total of 600,000 pesos. No? So how do we deal with this? So basically, yung TP minus one is uh, two years. So that's um, the year preceding the recovery. Tapos, yung cash flow natin on the third year, which is 300,000 pesos, pero 100,000 na lang yung kailangan nating ma-recover, di ba? Para makompleta natin 400,000. So basically, how we compute the TP or the payback period is 
Um, so we have 2, which is the PP minus 1, plus 400,000 minus 300,000 divided by 300,000. So yung 300,000 dun sa numerator is basically um, the cumulative cash inflow or what we already have recovered by end of year two. And the 300,000 in the denominator is um, what we would have earned by uh, on, on the third year. Uh, so that gives us uh, a total of 2.33 years for our payback period. All right, so I hope everything's clear so far. Let's um, try the more complicated um, method. Also, uh, let's move to the discounted payback period. With the discounted payback period, we use the present equivalent of the cash flows when computing for the payback period, and we use the company's MARR. So once we're able to achieve that, once we're able to do that, then the process becomes similar to um, what we do for um, simple payback period with non-uniform cash inflow. Uh, to better illustrate that, so for instance, balikan natin yung example natin kanina. No? So yung 50,000 equipment upgrade um, is expected to enhance your profit net and augment your profit net by 30,000 every year for a period of five years. Tapos yung payback, yung, yung MARR ng company natin, we set it at 8%. No? So if we use 8% as the MARR, so yun yung gagamitin natin na interest rate to get the present value of um, the 30,000 that occurs every year. Now, so yung 30,000 that occurs at year one, we just need to divide that by 1.08, diba? Or 1 plus 8% para makuha natin present equivalent, which is 27,777.78. Yung, yung nag-occur at year two, ang present worth niya is uh, 25,720.16, and so on. No? So, Notice na yung 30,000 that occurred at the fifth year, malit mas malit yung present equivalent niya, tant amount to um, 20,417.50. Now, the next step to compute for the cumulative cash flow, cash inflow. All right, so if we do that, no, basically we just need to add, so year one, Yun lang naman yung total niya. Pag year 2, we add what we earned, pre, pre, uh, earned from the previous year plus yung sa current year. So that amounts to um, 53,497.94. We add to that yung th sa third year and so on and so forth. You'll notice that 50,000 is attained between years 1 and 2. All right? So yung TP minus 1 natin is just equal to 1 year. So... And then we have um, 50,000 that we wish to recover fully. And then by end of year one, we would have recovered 27,777.78. So we subtract that as a 50,000. And then we divide by what we expect to have, the present equivalent of what we expect to have on the second year. So that's 25,720.16. And um, calculating will get 1.864 years. So you'll notice compared to the simple payback period, this is a bit higher. Because no? the simple payback period, we don't care no, kung anyari siya in the future. We just look at face values. No? But because um, in this discounted payback period, we consider that money has its time value and therefore na diminish yung value niya kapag nangyari siya in the future. No? So we get a little bit higher na um, payback period. All right. So that concludes our lesson on payback periods and um, project evaluation method. Thank you for listening.